Ladies and gentlemen, this opening contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner wearing the black trunks. He stands six feet, five inches tall. He weighed in at 234 pounds. He is a veteran of six professional bare knuckle bouts, and he fights out of Nottingham, England, by way of the Sherwood Forest, introducing Peter Little John Redford. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner wearing the black trunks with orange trim. He stands six feet, five inches tall. He weighed in at 240 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record of one victory, opposite no defeats. And he fights out of Cleric Vale, South Wales, introducing Troy Palmer. Our referee in charge with the bell rings, Clive Allison. Peter Radford and Troy Palmer to get things started. Here we go! Peter Little John Radford in the black trunks. Troy Palmer also in the black. He's got the red trim on the side of his trunks. Camouflage tennis shoes being sported by Little John. He's already thrown five right over right, overhand rights, um, Troy. He loves the big punch and he can knock you out. But Radford looks mean tonight. Yes. Very confident, but very, very ego free. Assured. But confident, assured, yep, in the fighter meetings. And, and what a pleasure it was to talk to him as the heavyweights get us underway. Looking at big Troy again, another right hand. Not much finesse there, as, but Radford worked off the gym early doors, but already he looks as if the energy is sapping a little bit to me. And you know how easy it is to gas out in a ring. Yes. Fast and explosive is how he describes his fight style. Patient and a switch of the stance is already a mark for Radford. Eye. Left eye as well, Radford. Big swings are giving time for Peter Radford to react. But both men have heavy arms here, just at the midway point of our first round. These are heavyweights, six foot, six foot odd, six foot five. When they hit you, stay hit. I have to say, I think Peter looks a little bit tired. And Peter Radford said, I'm finally fighting somebody my size. They are both six five. Big swing and a miss. Big mark under the eye of uh, Palmer as well. Under his left eye. Opening up. Yep. Mouthpiece. Clive Allison. I think Peter has to realize the referee stops the fight. He can't stop yep, it. Yep. Fortunately, the referee was right there when the mouthpiece went out. Good job as well from Palmer. Palmer just started training two years ago been fighting his entire life. Uh, good one, two, and a long right hand. He's bleeding from the mouth, though, and a good shot from Bradford. That hurt Palmer. From where we are, Tom, you can hear him. Oh, good shot. he will score it. He has to go to the... It's over. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Clive Allison calls a stop to this contest at two minutes, 41 seconds of the very first round, declaring your winner by knockout and still undefeated, Troy Palmer. Troy, what an amazing performance. It was a bruising, exhausting encounter from the very beginning. Tell us how you're feeling right now. Um, Peter, he's a great fighter. He's been through the BKB since day one. He's a veteran of sport. To meet the Sheffield again with him, to come up with a first round knockout, he's absolutely brilliant. I need to step up, I need to be trained harder. He's bigger fighter ahead of me. Thank you very much. I just want to ask you as well, that big right hand did the job for you tonight. 
You were patient in there though, because his head movement was awkward. You knew he was tiring, presumably. Yeah. He's a he's a slippy customer. Um, the right hands always want to get me out of trouble. But I need to be fitter. I need to be in the gym more. And I need to push up a little bit more of this. Thank you very much. They'll be singing in the valleys tonight. 100%. I've like got loads of people watching back home. He fucking did it, boys. Come on. Joy Palmer, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. I just love fighting and I've been watching a lot of the fights on YouTube and I, I looked at, I watched a few fights I'm like, yeah, this is for me. I'll say I'm a boxer puncher. I think I've got great head movement, great defence. I can fight any way. I can stand in there, I can hang in there. Explosion, drama, just everything. You better tune in. You're not going to want to grab popcorn. If you go grab popcorn, I'll come back. Fight might be done, so... Your eyes better be glued on the telly. He's from Holland, Dutch. Uh, it's an MMA fighter. And it's, he's gonna be a tough challenge, 100%. I'm training my hardest. Gonna give 100% in training camp. It's, I don't think it's gonna be a walk in the park. It's gonna be a hard day's work. And I shouldn't be saying this, but I've had a couple straightness outside, so everyone loves to win or no one loves to lose. So I wanna be the face of this company. Ladies and gentlemen, the next bout on our prelim undercard is scheduled for four two-minute rounds in the lightweight division and is brought to you by Tayco Farms. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with white trim. He stands five feet, six inches tall. He weighed in at 133 pounds. Tonight, he makes his professional bare-knuckle debut, fighting out of Northwest London, England, introducing phenomenal Plamedi Miantelo. And now his opponent standing across the trigon, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with white flames. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in at 136 pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare knuckle debut, fighting out of Oslo, Norway, introducing Rowan the Turtle Uba. Our referee in charge of the bell rings, Ian John Lewis. Ian John Lewis, our referee, as I mentioned, with the unified rules of bare knuckle, a professional combat debut being made by both fighters. So this lightweight matchup scheduled for four two-minute rounds. Interesting when you see people's habits. Plummerdy, as soon as uh, he was introduced, kissed both these biceps. You know, just to kiss both of them, just to say to people, I'm ready for this. Kevin Greenwood would like that because he's a big Hulk Hogan guy. He'll be on our main <laughs> card later tonight. Oh, dear. Here we go! Uba, the oh. impressive oh. and scores the knockdown instantaneously. The slick southpaw off to a great start. Wow, what a shot that was. And he's coming hunting again. Yeah, he is. Heavy-handed. You can see what he means when it's just chaotic. Chaotic, but also pinpoint accuracy. Effective, yeah. effective. And that's good, isn't it? Effective chaos. Yeah, absolutely. Controlled chaos, effective aggression. Six amateur MMA matches for Uba. So we will see if the clinch and dirty boxing becomes a factor if that could be an advantage in this spot right here, Tom. Absolutely. I'm just looking there. I think Clammy's just holding on a little bit here. I think yeah. It's his debut. He didn't know what to come, and he's learning by the minute here. But he looks confident, I have to say. Uh, Rowan looks really, really confident. And he just did a right hook from the turtle. Now it seems like Clamedi, Niantiolo, Phenomenal one, starting to find his place a little bit, starting to settle into the fight. Absolutely. How many fights have we seen where somebody gets put down and goes on to win the fight? Yeah. You know, it can happen. This Every every Laurent T. Smash Nelson fight. <laughs> <laughs> every time we talk about BYB and I explain it to people, I said, explain BYB, I say, you never know. Yeah. You never know. This is a good fight, this. This is a good fight. It's nice to see Plametti settling in. 21 amateur boxing bouts on his resume. 
and get it up. Yep. Get it up from a knockdown on his it, debut. Yep, instantaneously. Oh, look at the dancing here. I tell you, he Rowan, did tell, hey, what did he say? I'm about the entertainment value. Rowan has just danced around. He's danced and danced and danced. Unbelievable. Rowan is sucking the crowd in as well. Is this coming to remind us what he told us in the meeting? Yes, interview? he did. Enter entertainment. Did you tell him I already mentioned it? He's, he's dancing as well. Yes. He's light on his he's feet. A, he's a fun guy. He, so he gave me a Norwegian Kit Kat yesterday, Tom. And he said, I want you to to tell me if it's better than the English one or, or the United States. Okay. So it's better in Canada, it's way better in Norway, and I will tell him that. What, we know, what I now know is you don't share nothing. <laughs> That's cool. Well, he's, that, you know, he wants my feedback. I'll give it to him later. <laughs> feedback from the first round. This is going to be exciting. Combat debut for both men. Two-minute rounds. Plamini's settling down a little bit here, I think. Yes. And he started to talk at the end of the and his first round. Great combination there from him. Sometimes, I suppose, Mike, a punch on the nose refocuses you, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Look from Rowan's nose as well. Both fighters settling in. Yeah. You can see Rowan's uh, experience, though, as a as an MMA yes. fighter, can't you? So light on his feet. And he wants to be unique and, and someone who is entertaining. And he talked about one of our former champions, Mark the Shark Irwin, yep. who Whatever you can say about wins and losses and titles and losing a belt, Mark is always having fun and Mark is always entertaining. What does he make it? A yeah. crowd, crowd pleaser. Yes, indeed. So shout out to former champion Mark the Shark Irwin, back home in California. Final seconds of round number two. I think Clamity has to get him away from the corner. He's been tucked in that corner three times. Get him in center of the ring. Get him in the center of the ring, but when he gets in that corner, he gets punished. Orthodox stance, black trunks with the white waistband for Phenomenal. The turtle with the black, the fiery white. He is a natural southpaw. And the, the, that's where probably he was caught earlier. Yeah. When you find the southpaw, your feet are important to get you in the right position to deal with him. And he didn't, and he got tagged. Now I think he's he's certainly settled down a lot now, Plamody. Oh, First round was the knockdown, so the 10-8. Round number two, very close. This is round number three. Mike Goldberg, Tom Ross, Gareth A. Davis. Great to be here, BYB 33. He needs a lockdown. He needs a knockdown now, doesn't he? Oh, good trading blows there, both at him. Trying to impress. Good job from Plamity. And there's that experience with the gloves on. Yeah. And the over 20 amateur boxing bouts and uh, hours and hours of training. Whether it's BYB or gloved or whatever, work off the jab, it works. Yeah. Only in this sport, it can knock you out. We saw a couple of examples Didn't of that just... last time we were together in Leeds. Good counter jab from Uba. They're promising prospects over Perry. They really are. Very evenly matched. And the beauty of BYB is it showcases some great new talent. And, and you notice that the age difference is steady. The knockdown in basically the first 10 seconds of the fight. The big difference on the scorecards with two minutes remaining. Southpaw fighting out of Norway. Rwan Uba and Flametti. Antiolo fighting out of Wembley, London, England. They clinch. To be fair, all 
Ruan has to restay in his feet. Yeah. He's probably won the fight. He stays on his feet with a 10 8 in the first round. There's the shout from the corner jab. Like how he gets compact, comes over the yeah. top, just missed with that right hook that he connected with suddenly in round two. They've both got excellent skill, haven't they, in terms yes. of the way they are, their footwork, they've got good skills, a pair of them. It was said, pressure is my main thing. I create for my left hand and right on cue. Spot he delivers on. a spot on delivered. left. And again. And that's the first shot in four rounds we've seen to the body. Yeah. Hear the shout, let your hands go. 35 seconds remaining in this four round matchup. Again, a nice combination. Good avoidance by Uba as well. Said his greatest influence is his mom, Muna. Creative, tough, always pushed him. Rowan said, she is the only person I'm actually afraid to fight. Exactly, his mom. <laughs> to be fair, aren't we all? Yeah, very much so. Final seconds. I wonder if the judges will take into account that Rowan the fight is pretty untidy this final round. Yeah. Clinching and holding and not punching. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of four full rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. All three judges see the contest 38 to 37. Declare your winner by unanimous decision. Ruan the Turtle Uba. So, Ruan, what an amazing debut, ladies and gentlemen, for Amanda Plamenic. Can we have a round of applause? What an incredible debut for both men. What a fight. Thank you, thank you. First of all, I want to thank Jim for this opportunity. And my coaches, Gav, and my teammates have been helping me a lot with this fight. And huge thanks to my opponent as well. Because this fight, I wanted to show it to the fans. I wasn't just trying to get a finish or something. I wanted a brawl, I want to get damage and damage. Because I'm thinking to fight more and more and more. And I want the fans to be entertained. And thank you everybody back home as well, what, buying the pay-per-view and getting tickets and everything for the sponsor and everything. Thank you. Dangerous left hands at the very beginning. Plamedi was in trouble early on. What heart he showed in this fight. You say you're already a champion. Your mum will be pleased tonight. Yeah, she's watching. She's watching, so I hope she likes the fight. And also, I wanted, I wanted to hear today, it's all over by Mike, but I didn't get the chance. Hopefully the next fight, we'll hear it. You're going to fight this guy again sometime, Plamedi? I don't want to congrats to him. I'm not a poor loser, so well done, you won. But I felt like I landed the better shot. I was boxing on the back foot, popping the jab. But I'm not a... He, it's his night, congratulations. It, we can do it again, maybe. I would say, I would say we're both winners. Medal, medal or not, we're both winners. We made everything happen. We fought, and it, we got knocked out, but we kept going. Great, great stuff, everybody. Give them a round of applause, please. Thank you very much. Well done, gentlemen. He's certainly he going. He's swinging. He's swinging. He's swing. Oh, he's oh, caught him. Oh, he's he's gone. caught he's him. Gone. Oh, my goodness. He's caught him with a shot. Look at him snarling at his opponent. Oh, oh, he's done. Oh, boom. Oh, he's won it. Going in there, the massive underdog uh, to come out with the win was unbelievable. I can't, I can't describe the emotions that were going through my head by the end of it. I think I've learned, you know, how it feels to get punched by a knuckle now. So I've had a taste for it. Uh, you know, I'm still very new to the sport. It didn't really go for that long. So, um, you know, going into BY being our longer rounds, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think a, a big lesson was not to rush in. I think, as you see, about. 10, 15 seconds in, I got dropped. But now I think I'm gonna take my time a little bit more and, and, and ease into the fight, if you would. I like to just stand there, go punch for punch and see who comes out on top. And uh, you had nowhere to run and on a triangle, you've definitely got nowhere to go.
Pat Nash! I know he's a very good fighter. I know he's had a, a few bare knuckle fights. I'm not going to underestimate him. He looks he looks very good on paper, and I've seen a few of his fights. I see he didn't get too lucky against Lee Spencer. So I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping to you know kind of do the same as Lee and just stop him nice and early, not take too much damage, and just. Yeah, finish him early. Down the line, I definitely want to see one of those police cadets belts around my around my waist. That is definitely a dream. I'm still very new to the sport, you know. I didn't really fight very long against Lee, so I've still got a lot to learn. I'm very humble, but that is where I want to get, and I do believe that I will get there. I'm just going to keep it respectful. I know you're a very game lad, and I expect nothing less but a war, so I'll look forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is scheduled for five three-minute rounds. In the welterweight division, taking place inside the smallest surface in combat sports, BYB's Mighty Trigon. Our referee in charge of the bell rings, Andy Albrighton, and this bout is brought to you by GC3. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with black and gold trim. He stands 5 feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 143 pounds. He is a veteran of five professional bare knuckle bouts, and he fights out of Farnborough, Hampshire, England. Introducing Patrick Nash. And now his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 144 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record of one victory, opposite no defeats. And he fights out of Tamworth, Staffordshire, England. Introducing Ty Street Bomber Patterson. Patrick Nash in the white, gold, and black trunks. Ty Patterson, just 20 years old, in the black trunks. Patrick Nash, I saw him outside the hotel, headed over. He said, you know, I break my hand in every fight. I expect to do it again. I said, making the switch to bare knuckle, do you try to aim in different places? Because Tom, sometimes yes. fighters will say that, he goes, nah. It's in my DNA, it's in my muscle memory, I just throw it to try to finish the fight. He tries to, he aims for the chin every yep. opportunity. Yep. And listen, these two guys, Ty Patterson is the young pretender here, he's 17 years yep. younger. And he's, he wants to prove a point. Nash wants to show there's life in the old dog yet. This is a classic encounter. You couldn't take Nash lightly, that's for sure, because he's game as they come. Loves a tear up, but so does Patterson, to be fair. And, and Patterson showed his heart and well, his will and skill. He got knocked down twice in his debut against Lee Spencer, but was able to come back and earn a stoppage in round number two. I mean, we talked about that. Mike, that is such a big thing. Yep. You know, the, the, the overwhelming thing is stay down. But you get up when you've been knocked down. Yep. Amazing. Little word from the referee's not too happy with him. Andy Albright. They work in the clinch. How many times, Mike, do we see? We just saw Nash throw a big right hand, miss totally. People don't realize you lose so much energy when you hit, when you, you throw a punch and miss. Yes. You use a lot of energy. Patterson rubbing the back of his head. Fight continues. Good shot. And landed beautifully. Good body shot. Body, body. Trying to work himself to a knockdown. Good return from Patrick Nash. Good flurry from Ty Patterson. He smells blood here. He's caught him again with the left hook. He was looking for the Harry Chigliotti yeah. liver shot. And he does it well, by the way. Yeah. Or as Harry would say, the liver shot. You don't want to keep remembering about him. Yeah. The pacing up and down the ring at the start. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We've already got a young superstar in Harvey Dossett. Another oh, young wow. star in the making in Ty Patterson would be a pleasure to welcome to BYB. Going back to what we said at the start, the youngsters coming through are going to be bare knuckle fighters. They're not going to be glove fighters who fight bare knuckle. They're going to be bare knuckle fighters. Absolutely. 
and that's the start of the dynasty and the legacy. It, it's, it's like it was a couple of decades ago when but, fighters became mixed martial artists there you go. instead of different skill sets competing in MMA. Round one, a good one. We're attracting all sorts here behind us is uh, Sam Eginton, the former WBO world champion. Love blood, that. And also Commonwealth and European, and he's fighting soon as well, so he's here. I want to try and get him to fight. Paul and Paul and Yeah, yep. there you go. Yep. The magic man fought him. But they, this is the attraction of this sport. White, gold, and black trunks for Patrick Nash. Black trunks for Ty Patterson. Patterson with that great flurry. You would think got the nod from the judges in round one. But this is a long, long way from over. Five, three minute round. Do you know when Nash is at his best? When you think you've got him beat. Yeah. Oh, great uppercut. Coming off his victory in May against Danny Fletcher, a fight that went then the three round, two minutes around distance. And he He's hurt his leg. Oh, yeah, the knee's he's, he's gone. He's it's gone. over. It's on. Yeah, I can see His knee's in serious right trouble. Yeah. You can see it. Oh, he's in agony. Yeah, yeah. It popped right up. Let's get nice. the ducks in. Get in. Here's the ducks. I got a quick glimpse at it. Yeah, terrible. Not good. And I was just about to say, Na um, Nash has got a massive lump on the side of his head. But you know, when these sort of things happen, that's, you, there's nothing you can do about it. He's in pain there. Yeah. I think they've got to, it might be painful, but they've got to unpop it as quick as they can. Yeah. I think the duck's there, the duck's there as well, they want him in. Well, one thing's for sure, the fight's over. That's a dreadful way to end a fight. It really is, especially for a young man, 20 years old. BYB debut. They did pop it back in, because it was not a pretty look when he first went down. Show a class and respect from Patrick he's, Nash wants to step in, yeah. Mike, he's distraught, Ty Patterson. That's not a loss, though. That's an injury. It's unfortunate. It will go as, unfortunately, a loss on the ledger. Correct. But in the big picture, we can't wait to see him again. And we hope it's not serious, something that keeps him out for months and months and months. He was so looking forward to this, spoke to him. He was oh, yeah. so looking forward to this. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Andy Albright calls a stop to this contest at 1 minute 41 seconds of the second round. And due to a doctor stoppage, this bout has been ruled a no contest. So we weren't deep into the fight, Tom. Second round and a no contest. So I, I said it's not a loss, and now truly it's not a loss. It's not a loss, and yeah. I, I think that's a good call. Yeah. Well, the top Whoa. eight, Paul's down, Paul's down, now the shot. I always go in to finish the fights anyway, well, it's just down to the opponent for how long they last. I just, I always try and finish the fight. I think that's why I'm exciting to watch. Right, number cat, number cat. One, two, calls wrong. One, two, four, left, number cat. Oh, that's the end of that. You don't get no extra money for extra rounds. Now we're being like, well, is, is you can't get no more real when, when nothing on, like, and I, I do enjoy it, like, I love it. I've just changed it all around. There was nobody who drank more than me. There was nobody who, who I've, t I've took it nearly every drug you can think of. I've drunk daily, on a daily basis, and I just cut it clean, everything. Done and dusted with it. When I cut drinking out, I lost like eight kilos strip just from no drinking, so I got up to like 108 kilos. Also, we cut out like chocolate and stuff. I was still eating the normal food, but I was, wasn't eating biscuits and chocolate and crisps and stuff. So then I got up to some like 90 odd kilos, and I was like, what if I got to the gym as well? So like I went to the gym as well, and I just snowballed into these like positive things, and like and that's what happened. And I was like, I think I can, I think I can fight again. And, see where I go and see if I just do my best. Everything is really simple. 
well, the artist, like you said, it's your mind that makes it the artist. You know, like, your, your mind is in control of everything. Like, if you you can cut out anything you want to, it's your mind that you, you've got to take control of. I fought him about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, in MMA. Um, he was a bit of a character then, I, but um, <laughs> I don't think he's changed much in his characteristics, like, but um, I don't know, I seen him in, in uh, in the show after my last fight. I seen him in the show and he just said we should fight in this and I didn't think much of it. And then like he, he gone and called me out on Facebook and here we are. I think he forgot my power. <laughs> a lot, as a lot of them do it, right? They all, like I say it as and, and, I, haven't, and I haven't got it wrong yet. And like, they all get shocked with how hard I hit. Everybody's shocked with my power, and everyone is. They all like say, I'll be the one to do this, and I'll be the one to do that, but uh, no one has stood in front of me yet. Ladies and gentlemen, this final bout on our undercard is scheduled for five three minute rounds in the light heavyweight division, and is brought to you by Clue Nicotine Pouches, the most awarded nicotine pouch in the world, setting a new standard in a new category. If you want to stop vaping, let us give you a clue. Our referee in charge when the bell rings, Ian John Lewis. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner. We're in the white trunks with purple trim. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 173 pounds. He holds an even bare knuckle record of one victory, opposite one defeat, and he fights out of Bournemouth, England, introducing Jimmy Justice Miller. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with white trim. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 173 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record of three victories, opposite no defeats, and he fights out of Nanticlot, Wales, by way of Gwen Wales, introducing Garrett Gatti Williams. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Light heavyweight matchup. Jimmy Miller, the slick southpaw, and Gareth Gatchy Williams. Here we go. You and I have talked about Gareth Williams. Yeah. I'm convinced we've got a future world champion, even at, even at his age. But this opponent. Uh, Jimmy Miller, he's got a tasty record as well. This is a great fighting prospect. And he's got all kinds of things going on with his shorts. And I think he would make my late mom very proud with the undergarment, with the leopard. My mom loved her leopard. Did she love the leopard skin? Oh, yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good work from Miller inside. Corner, yeah. Good work from Jimmy Miller inside there. Miller said he was a different man when he fought MMA. Debut in the Trigon for Miller's second fight in the Trigon for Gatchi. He fought at home in Wales at BYB 30 and finished Nathan Massey in round number one. 3 0 overall, 1 0 in the Trigon. Just ate a short left hand from the slick southpaw, Jimmy Justice Miller. First time tonight. In all the fights we've seen, clinch and punch, and that came from Miller. Clinch and punch. First time we've seen it tonight. Pro MMA background for both of these men. As I mentioned, they competed in mixed martial arts many, many years ago. Nearly 14 years ago. Both of them with about 10 professional MMA battles. I think Gareth also fought Dan Lerwell and Brad Scott, who's fighting tonight. Absolutely. These are two good fighters, these, Mike. Two accomplished fighters. Our featured matchup 
Here are prelims from the hangar venue in Wolverhampton, England. Short right hands. One, two, three, one, and four of an onslaught thrown by Gatchy Gareth Williams. Uppercut. Under a minute, round number one. These three-minute rounds, Mike, you have got to be fit to get into the ring for these three-minute rounds and five of them. Because that this trigon is the biggest lie detector in the world. Gareth Williams mixing up his punches well here in the early part of the fight. A couple and of and there's another body shot. That awkward though, the south horse. Yeah. Unless especially you use your feet. Uh, especially unless you use your feet. Good clinch work again, turning boxing. Because if you put your foot outside of his, you negate his south pool. Gareth Williams ready to come out. And great camaraderie between the two of them. Round number two. Gareth Williams, black with the white trim. Leopard, little white, little purple, little sequence, you name it. Jimmy Miller doing justice to his fight costume today. Oh, this is and a again, This is great. This is toe to toe. Now, and, and keep in mind, Tom, and you would know better than any. For longtime BKB fans, BYB allows a lot more work in the clinch. Absolutely, 100%. Yes. So it's a different type of fight. Especially for guys who have good clinch backgrounds, be it from MMA or be it from Muay Thai, if you're not the Got it, one shot. Yeah. It's more entertaining for the fans and more thrilling for the fans. 30 boxes. There you go. And the Trigon ring it up makes for that. Here is Outlander! Just like that! Ladies and gentlemen, referee Ian John Lewis calls a stop to this contest at 56 seconds of round number two, declaring your winner by knockout and still undefeated, Garrett Gatti Williams. With Gareth. Gareth. Gareth Williams, what an amazing performance. And the thing that stood, yes, but the thing that stood out tonight is that you always fight with composure and your head up. Yeah, um, I'll be honest, I had a bit of a slow start and I think, um, you know, I, every time I come in here, I, I just, I always got to criticise myself and I just thought I had a bit of a slow start and everything I practised in the chain rooms I didn't do tonight, but I obviously got a win, but same again, I, I just, I, I know I got more in there and I just, I just need to progress a little bit more and use my, use my techniques that I'm doing in the, in the changing rooms and stuff and bring it to the ring, but it is what it is. Champion in life, winner in here tonight. How about a world light heavyweight title? Is that on your mind now? Like I've always said, right? I'm, all, I'm, I'm a champion in my head anyway. These boys are coming to fight me, I'm not coming to fight them. But the thing is, I've done, I've done way more in this sport than most of these boys done who's holding titles. You know, everybody, this is my fourth fight now, fourth finish, finish everybody I've come against. Uh, two round finishes and two first round finishes and you know I'm still I need I'm, I'm a champion but I just need that belt to prove it there you go the belt back to you guys can I just say one thing as well I'm gonna go watch my friend Martin fight now and I'm gonna go straight home to my wife she's got a carry waiting for me so I'm gonna go straight home to my wife she's heavily pregnant so she couldn't be here tonight big shout out to my wife Jay I'm, uh, I'm coming home now as soon as Martin's finished I'm coming home Good night, everybody. Five children, and Jade, as Gareth mentioned, not in attendance tonight because number six is coming any day now. Congratulations to the Williams family, and congratulations on the win to Gatchy.